Hi, I'm Josh, your English learning guide, and this is English Hacks. Today we have the idiom of the week, and this idiom is to mind your own beeswax. So here we have a nice little bee friend to help us out, and of course we have uh, what is supposed to be a beehive, which is where bees live. So what is the meaning of this phrase? Well, it means mind your own business. Well, what does that mean? Business has a couple of different meanings. The meaning that you probably know is where you sell stuff, right? Somebody owns a business, they sell stuff or a service, right? Like I teach English, that's my business. But business has another meaning, which means something that involves a particular person or it, it doesn't involve other people, right? So if I say, um, that's my business, what I'm telling you is I don't want you to be involved. I want you to go away, leave me alone, at least on this particular issue or this topic. Okay, so it, it doesn't involve you. So if I say, mind your own business, we're using that meaning of business and mind means pay attention to, right? Like we say, mind your manners, right? So be, be aware of your manners, be polite, right? We tell children, mind your manners. So mind your own business means don't pay attention to things that don't involve you. Okay. This is my issue, not yours. So that's what mind your own beeswax means. It's just another way to say the same thing. And we're going to talk about over here how that happened. But first, let's look at some examples. And we're actually going to start with this one because it's more direct. First person, what are you doing? Second person, mind your own beeswax. And notice how I say that. Mind your own beeswax. Mind your own beeswax. Might even be an exclamation point here. So it's strong. And this phrase is pretty direct. It's pretty strong. I'm basically saying this doesn't involve you. Go away. So you can use this with someone that you have an informal relationship with, such as a good friend, but you can also use it with strangers, for example, because even though that's not informal, a stranger shouldn't try to ask you about you know, these things necessarily. I mean, this is a pretty basic question. So the answer, mind your own beeswax or business, might sound a little strange, like they're okay, well, why? But if I'm a stranger, I don't know you. So let's say, for example, that I am sitting on the bus or maybe on a bench in the park and I'm on my phone and I'm texting a friend and there's someone next to me or behind me who starts reading what I write. Say, I say, uh, oh, I'll meet you at 10. And the person says, oh, what's happening at 10? This is a completely random person. They, they have no business, right? They have no business looking at my phone. It's not their business. It's my business. So I can say in that situation, mind your own beeswax, right? Or mind your own business. So even though it's with a stranger, they crossed a line, as we would say, they, it's, that's not socially acceptable. And so even though this is strong, I can still use it because it's a, strong response back, like, go away. You know, I don't know you. Okay. Now up here, this is sort of based on this. So let's say I'm telling you about the guy who was looking at my phone. And so I say, right, he wanted to know what I was doing, or he wanted to know what's happening at 10. So I told him to mind his own beeswax, right? So notice we can say his instead of your, because now I'm talking about a guy and I'm telling you the story of what happened with this guy. So I told him to mind his own beeswax. Now, another related phrase here is a busy bee, a busy bee. And that is a phrase we have, which means basically someone who is very hard working. They are a hard worker. Okay. Hard, not meaning difficult, but meaning they put a lot of effort into their work. And this phrase probably comes from the fact that when we think of bees, right, we think of them as 
hard workers. Now we also have worker ants, which if you're not sure what that is, you can look it up, A-N-T-S, so an ant. For some reason, we chose B, not ant. Now finally, we can come here to the etymology. Now, this phrase has been around for a while, but the use of mind your own beeswax as a, another way to say mind your own business comes from a 1934 slang phrase but it eventually expanded and it became an idiom. Now, one thing that's very interesting, especially if you like grammar or if you speak German or some other Germanic language, the reason why we say beeswax, which by the way, what is beeswax? So this is actually a word. Beeswax is the wax that bees make, right, to make the stuff in their hive. Beeswax, the things that bees make, that's their business. That's what they do, right? It doesn't involve us. So we say beeswax meaning business, and beeswax comes from bee plus wax. And this is actually from the 1600s, very old. And it is what is called the genitive form, which is a unnecessarily complicated grammar term that basically means possessive, essentially. Modern English might think of it like this, bees wax, right? Like the wax of the bee, it belongs to the bee. And English doesn't really have this genitive form anymore, where for example, in uh, German, they'll actually change an adjective, for example, with a particular ending that is the genitive ending to show that it's possessive. So they don't use this, or like in some languages they say, you know, blank, de, blank, something of something. They have a, a special part of the grammar that shows that connection or that relationship. You might be interested to know that his Right, we have this S here. And his, right, belonging to him, this is a very, very old word that we still have. We don't really have the genitive form as a grammar form in English anymore. But we do have certain words like his that English speakers have been using for a long time and we still use it with that same meaning. That's why the word his is the particular word that we use for the possessive. We still have it. So beeswax is a very old word based off of an older form of English grammar that we don't really have anymore. That doesn't really mean much for the idiom itself, but it's a nice little interesting thing to know about English. So questions or comments, leave them down below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Well, hello there. Want more idioms? I got a playlist right here or you can check out this recommended video. But first, don't forget to subscribe.